Well, hello everyone and welcome. This is the NetTalk User Group webinar for Thursday, the 16th of July, 2020. Lest we forget, this is still 2020, uh, the clearest vision year of them all. And um, I thought I'd just put a pretty arrow on the screen today. Read into that whatever you want. Um, with me today from the mostly not infected, but some parts infected, Australia. It's Ted. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Excellent, everybody. Good morning in Australia time. And Ted has been well behaved, as has all his compatriots nearby, and they're in a low infected area and, and relatively unlocked down. Is that correct, Ted? Unlocked down to the point that all the rugby teams are moving to Queensland, all the AFL teams are moving to Queensland. What they could can't possibly go wrong with that? Where else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All good. All good. And from a place where um, he is still safe, uh, in somewhere Washington State, it's John. Hey, John. How's it going? Good. No couples. No sneezles. Nothing like that. Huh? No, none of those things. Doing <laughs> just headaches. I mean, you do enough of these webinars, you get headaches anyway. So I, I kind of feel like that's not a symptom we should worry about. The, um, today is questions and answers day. So do go ahead and put your network related questions up into the questions box. Uh, if you did send me an email in the week, just throw your name up in the box there. So I remember you. And while those are coming in, let me jump quickly to the network page because there was a build this week. Uh, da, 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 da. I should have had this up already. Uh, documentation index, version history. Right, there was an 1140 build that went up this week. It was hoping to go up last Friday, but uh, it got delayed a little bit, as these things sometimes do. Um, so there was uh, an update to the email. This is an update to the uh, this this thingy here, which was in 1139. Um, which was working very nicely. There was one extra place where it needed to be added to, which was the background URL settings. And also it was pointed out to me that if people use capital letters for the HTTPSs, I wouldn't know why you would do that, but if you did that, it didn't work either. So I made a case in sense stuff. So that's a small tweak there. Uh, the waypoints queue um, was a string that was only 1K long. And if you have enough waypoints in your root, get root command, it uh, was chopping them off. So I made that bigger. And there was a bug in draw root, which got fixed as well. So a little update there, a couple of fixes uh, and tweaks. Um, the big the big fix was the network browse, uh, the header columns could go weird. And that was a fundamentally result of the last column not being marked as last in cell, which is absolutely allowed. Um, it was just in my test cases, we didn't have one of those. So uh, that has been tweaked. That was a an update from 11.38, I think, um, 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 one of these things. Uh, which one was it? There, this fix here, it was a side effect of that. So if you've got 11.38, you'll want to get, or 11.39, you'll want to get 11.40, just for that fix. Uh, Bill Shields in Australia was, was uh, doing an unescape call on a very large JSON file, which had been URL encoded. So URL encoded is the the technique of putting percent um, number number to represent a character. That's called URL encoding. And he had a JSON file, and it typically encodes non-alphanumeric characters like punctuation and uh, things like that. And his JSON file was very large, well over a meg in size, and so every single curly bracket had been URL encoded. So many, many, many of them. And he discovered it took a while to decode that. It took in the region and takes, but took him between a minute and 90 seconds, depending on what hardware you ran on. So we had a look at that method and we refactored it to use string theory. And there was a bit of a speed improvement, but nothing to get overexcited about. And then uh, in string theory 327, which also went up this week, um, there is a, something of a dramatic speed improvement because it now takes 
about eight one hundredths of one second to uh, decode URL, URL decode um, a string that's over a meg in size. So that's that's considerably an improvement. I think that 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 counts. Um, so if you are, and by the way, it goes faster for all URL decodes. So you you get this improvement straight up. If you are on eleven forty. Yeah, grab string theory 327 or later. I think 328 is up now. And um, you will discover that uh, under the hood, things are just going a little bit quicker. You probably won't notice it for most cases, but if you're getting very large URL encoded strings coming in, then you will notice it uh, big time. Uh, and along the way, there was a little uh, template setting that got fixed. Um, that was misnamed. Right, so that's the 1140 build, nice little maintenance build. Um, as you probably know, version 12 is now uh, on route. It is, uh, I spent a fair bit of time actually setting it up because behind the scenes, just setting up a, a new build for a new product takes a bit of time, but more importantly, uh, it takes a bit of time to set up the documentation and everything else. So there's a few things already in. Uh, and they needed to be documented before I can make the first build. So I am, as always, hoping to get the Sequence 7 and Network Curl builds out. They need to come out together. Um, I'm hoping to get those out as soon as possible. I, I would say next week, but I've said that the last two weeks and it hasn't turned out that way. So if not next week, then then hopefully very soon after that. I, uh, thank you for all for your patience. It is, uh, I am as keen to get it out as you are to get it. Let me put it that way but it doesn't help to rush these things out before they're ready. Um, right, any questions on the release? I'm not thinking there will be. So let's dive straight into the questions uh, that we had already. First one up today is Danielle, who did mail me something. So I, Danielle, I unmute you and then, oh, you unmute yourself. Very good. How's it going, Danielle? I'm okay. good. How are you guys? Yeah, not too bad. We had nice weather the last couple of days, which we had a big storm over the weekend. So a bit of have rain and a bit of sun. Horribly cold in Joburg. Say again? I said we've got your cold now in Joburg. Oh, I mean, it's it's been what, about 20 degrees today. So, but you know, it's it's tough out here in the continents, but someone has to. That's 20, 20 C for those of you overseas who are listening. Midwinter, I mean, it's cold days, 20 degrees. Even for Ted, that's pretty good, I think, Ted. Yeah. Um, Bruce, my question relates to um, doing a net talk post. Um, I'm yes. doing a post to an API using JSON. I've managed to get the post working and I managed to receive data back from it using the um, page receive. I want to know in one window, can I do more than one post? Because surely Absolutely. It's the same page received every time or yes yes so you've got one object and yeah. so but you can you can you can use that object over and over and over again right uh, you can do post 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 what you can't do is is store them up so you do one post and you get a page received you yeah. then do the next post and you get a page received you then do the next post and you get a page received and typically what one does is is you create what's called a state machine so you have one variable that you can say, okay, when I'm doing my first post, I set this thing to be one. And then in page received, I look at it and I say, oh, if it was one, I know which one I was doing, right? And then I'm yeah, going to do my second post, it. I'll and set this thing to two. And then I come into page received and I say, oh, this thing's two. So I know I'm, I'm getting the response for this thing over here. Um, and you just progress through like that. What you can't do is post, post, post. That's not allowed. You, you have to do one post, get the reply, do another post, get the reply, do another post, get the reply. Okay, so I'm doing that. So I am doing the first post. I'm setting a local variable before I do that. Um, I then go to page received, I check the local variable, I do the code, and then, but I don't seem to be hitting the second variable, even though I've set the variable a second time. So I just wanted to make sure whether I've got a bug in my code or whether I'm just using it wrong. So based uh, on that, no. Sounds like you're using it right. Um, you can set the conditional compile, um, yeah. net show send and net show receive. They're very useful. So if I just grab anything here, uh, which one should I do? This one here should be fine. Yes. Um, in in Clarin, we can add 
conditional compile switches. So let me, it's coming up. There it comes. If we go to do, 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 project options, compiling, these things here are called conditional compile symbols. And there are two ones that are really important. One which is called net show send, and another one which is called net show receive. And if they are set to one, then you will see what's going out in debug view, and you'll see what's coming back in debug view. And okay. that can be really I'm going to for the trace. Obviously, if I can do it this way, it should be much easier. Yeah, yeah. So then you know the second post is going, and then you can see the second response. Maybe the second response is saying something like, um, it's unhappy with the header, or who knows what, right? I mean, it could be anything. Um, but at least you can see the response in plain text and go, oh, okay, I kind of get what I've done wrong. Um, yeah. All right, perfect. I'll give that a run. Thank you so much. Okay, cool, Daniel. Good okay. luck. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You can mute yourself. There we go. See, Daniel's an experienced pro at this, knows how to work it. Right, Victor's got a question. So, unmute Victor, send him an unmute request. Hey, Victor. Uh, there you are. How's it going? Greetings. I won't say good morning, afternoon, whatever. So, um, I mentioned this a while back and really never had time to, to follow up on it. Uh, the screen that I have, this kind of like the, the update screen from the browse is very wide and has a lot of uh, different, a lot of fields on each line. And when I go, go like to a narrow view, like for a, a, a small device, they, they're stacking up on top of each other in an unusable format. And okay. so basically what I've determined I need to do is have one process for normal screen and then it because I can't use the same fields in this twice in the same process um, a separate one for the narrow view and I'm just trying to re be reminded of how I would do that uh, from a control standpoint you know wh which one of them to call based upon what type of device is being used yeah I think you're going slightly down the wrong track so when you say process you mean form right yeah Okay, so what you want to do is you want to keep just one form. There, there's so many good reasons to have just one form. It, it, it's so much less work for you in the long run, and you don't run the risk of, of bugs and things like that. However, that said, what you're going to want to do is get your hands a little bit dirty with the old CSS. And there are two things which come into play. The one is that you can hide fields on the small screen. There's a CSS um, class for that. So what that means is you can say, let me let me open up one here, control. Oh, let's see what we've got. Um, mm -hmm, all files, yeah. Um, I'm one, do, 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 where am I gonna find it? I think it is in, It's either in Network CSS or it's in Netwebsy or it's in Grid. Uh, da, 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 where's my Grid? Where's me Grid one? There, going blind. Um, if small, yeah, okay, there we go. So, so you can, um, if you add the class if small. Okay. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Um, surprises me slightly. It's not large. Because that, that'll hide it cunningly. If it's small, it'll hide it. It seems a bit backwards. Um, I had a whole bunch of these. Oh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so if large display none. 
Okay, so they they're hidden. Okay, all right. So if you if you add the class if small, then typically it's invisible. And then this is a a medium sized screen. So if you've got if medium, then it's invisible. If large, then it's invisible. If not small, <laughs> you see these? Yeah. Oh, I see. So if small is by default that, and then the max width, it's going to turn that back on. Okay. Okay. So you've got to, it, it, it's more cunning than what it looks like. So basically, if you have the, the class, if small, it will appear if the thing's small. If medium, if large, it'll appear only if it's large. Um, if not small, it'll appear. And don't worry about that. That's that. So you've got these classes, all right? Don't you don't at this point don't worry about why they work or how they work. But if you add them to a field, what you're really saying is like only show this field if medium, or if large, or if not small, or if small. Um, and and you can play with that. The other thing you can do is obviously change the CSS for the field in small mode. In in this when this screen is less than six forty pixels wide. Um, so what that means is that. When you say it's it's unusable, you need to go into well. What makes it unusable? Are there too many fields? Are the fields not the right size? Are they squished up in the same line? They should be under each other. You know, there's a whole bunch of questions that come up to play there. All of which you can manipulate the CSS. So it, rather it's... than say I want two forms, what you really want is a set of CSS which makes the form behave the way you want it to behave on small medium and large screens make sense yeah it, the problem is is that the in i've got four rows with 14 fields in each row and when i go to a small screen they're stacked on top of each other the first 14 then the second 14 then the third 14 and the fourth 14. okay so what what will you what would you like to see on the small screen what we, how would you envisage the second form being laid out? Column one as as row one. So you would then have one 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 two 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 three 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 kind of idea. Correct. Because see, I, I, the 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 columns. Are related to each other. It's it's fourteen days, another two weeks, and I have a the the name of the day, the the day of the month, and then the hour, and then what type of hour. And so, when I go narrow, I've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. And then I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I've got <laughs> the, the entry field for the hour. Then I've got the entry field for the type. And that's why I say it gets kind of unusable. Yes, I can imagine. Um, and that's where I was going to try to reuse the code and have actually um, two separate. Um, um, yeah, under the field. fields tab, I was going to have two tabs and then try to control the tab based upon what type of screen but i can't have the same fields mentioned twice in the same form yeah you can um so let's let's deal with that quickly you can have the same field on the same form it just needs a a, a unique use equate okay so that's why this setting exists um So every field has, uh, let's do that. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, every field has a, both a field ID and a field equate. Uh, come on, come on, come on, there we go. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a field. That's easier. Procedures don't have a field, so, right. so it's a bad choice. Of, da, da, da. So there, the type is string. Now I've got a field, okay. And I've got local data, I've got that, whatever. And you'll notice that primes use equate to be the same, but it doesn't have to be the same. So that could be ons one, and the other one can be ons two, or whatever. Um, 
And so you can have multiple fields then, which match back to the same data. Uh, so you, you're probably okay. on the right track there. Um, again, depending on the layout, I still think you've got options with CSS, which may be intriguing, but because because with the, with the flexbox you can you can change layout from column to row and vice versa, so there there are options there. But if you wanted to make it different tabs, that's probably a way to do it as well, and then just hide off the tab based on CSS. So have one tab that appears uh, here. There's the tab CSS, right? So there you can have one which is if small and the other one if not small. For example. Okay. Makes that sense? probably would be easier. And then I would set the tab style um, to plain or none, maybe even none, um, because we don't want to see the tab. And you've got you're going to have mutually exclusive CSS, so it'll only show you one or the other. Uh, it won't show you both. Does it make sense? Yes. You don't want you don't want like normal tabs because then one will be hidden, but you won't you won't necessarily be on the other one. I don't know. I mean, it could work. I it, 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 play around with that. Is what I'm saying. I guess play around with that. Okay. Play around with the tab CSS. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting challenge because uh, you're right. In one sense, you've got this 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 two by four, and you want to change to a four by two kind of concept. Um, Correct. And that, I think, may be possible with CSS, but maybe tricky. I would have to, yeah, give it a go. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. You, you've given me some good th thoughts. I'll, keep, I'll keep working on it. Thank you. Cool. Pleasure, Victor. Right. Now, at last, I mean, it's been a long time since we've heard from someone called Mike. So. I feel like now is the time to bring in anyone, anyone called Mike. Mike, are you there? I'm here. My, Mike is here. <laughs> at last, at last we have a mic. <laughs> oh, it's been so long. Hey, hey, Bruce, I just wanted to mention, based on what you, you just went over, uh, I use tabs a lot and, um, and, and I hide them, <laughs> but I didn't ever realize Never thought about having a tab type of none uh, and hiding them because I always end up with, even though I'm not using the tab from the user point of view, I always got a tab sticking up there. So thanks for that great hint too. Yeah, I mean, there's different tab types. So pick one that, that kind of looks good for your for your layout. Yeah, so, so my question is, <clears throat> uh, uh, every once in a while I'll have a, uh, an image on a button you know, an icon on a, on a button. And, and I went to do that uh, uh, this week and uh, it happened to be a start button. And I noticed on the template on a start button, the option to include an image is disabled. Hmm. How did that make you feel? Uh, um, like I got plain button. <laughs> Life is hard, eh? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, bring one up and have a look. It may well just be turned off. These things happen. Uh, mailbox options form sounds about right. Which one's got a start button? Not that one. Let me um, change to modified view. Uh, is it this one? No, oh, no, you know what it is. Report on mailbox options. Report on mailbox report options form. That sounds like a better one. I mean, a completely obvious name, really. Assuming it's the one we want. There we go. Start report button. Right, there's the button. Uh, and there it's all grayed out. Why is it grayed out? It's not because of that. You can put an icon on, obviously. Uh, 
Well, that's a great arch. We have a look see. Da, 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 da. Stop. This button set dot text. Now I want to find that image. Where is that image? Uh, button, 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 button. There. Type button, type button, type button, type button. Uh, start. If display button is started, uh, start of menu is fine. Right, that's fine. Start of button set. That's not what I had in mind. Are we on the form? Where's button type? What are we looking at? I have to find something that I can search on. Okay, straight off to the button set stuff. Yeah, there we go. And display buttons not start. That's an enable. No, oh, well apparently you can't do it for save, cancel, log out, start. Oh, with a delete. So they probably don't work on um, built-in buttons. They only work if you've got another button. That's interesting. So it's tempting you by it having it disabled, but in fact, it's not supported. Okay. Let's have a look, see if we, if we have a save button, if we get the same. Actually, I'll add one. Uh, Daniel, it's net show receive, not net show received. So drop the ED from the end. Sorry, Daniel's asking a question based on her question earlier. Uh, button. Yeah, that's, that's disabled for, uh, uh, let's type button. Okay, so type, start, no, save, no. It's all for everything, Mike. I don't know why you've, <laughs> <laughs> why are you clicking on the start button? Hmm? But, it, but it's on for button. Uh, no, it's not on for button. Oh, well, well, but yeah, it is. If you see right above image width, you got an image name. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, that, that's fair enough. Yes, that one's live. So it's it's only it's on it's a, for a plain button, not for any of the built-in buttons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean you can so, obviously use uh, the icon image, and you can make your own icon as well. So it turns out the image only on button buttons. There you go. Who knew? So alternatively, is there a way to use a button button to initiate no. a re or initiate a report? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. There's a reason the start is there. And yeah. there's a lot of code under that. What what's yeah. the image that yeah. you want to put on there? I mean, you know what? Send a feature request through post one on Network Central. And who knows what'll end up in Network 12 one day. But at least okay. you'll get on the list and now's the time. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, Thank you, Bruce. That's your best, best option. Or, and if nothing else, I'll just make all of this go away for all the other buttons, so you're not tempted to think about what's <laughs> happening, what you're missing out on. That's yeah, the, that's the root problem. You see, people say it's yeah. disabled. Says disabled. I say, cool. I'll just hide it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not disabled anymore. You don't have to feel bad. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Mike. I'll do that, Bruce. Thank you.
All right. I'm not seeing any other questions, John. Whack. Ah. Rich has got a question. question. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Um, there you go. People hey, are starting Bruce. to unmute themselves. Hey, Rich, how's it going? Did you unmute uh, yourself before I unmute you? Uh, no, I did not. I uh, system's whacked. You can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I was just to finish what we were just talking about. Uh, wouldn't it be easy to put a JavaScript button there? And what does one? No, what? How no, does? No. No. no? no. No, and uh, uh, I'm not even sure I know what you mean by JavaScript button. Oh, I thought I saw that on the template prompt. Oh, JavaScript icon. I meant I to say. Icon. Yes, no, absolutely. Yes. You can you can put a JavaScript icon on there. But that that we had covered. That icon field is open for all of them. But that's not what um, Mike was asking about. Because he was he wanted to put an image, an actual image file in. Which is different to the icon. The icon is available, absolutely. If you put uh, email, yeah, you know, you'll get the email icon, and you can make your own icons, and they can be multicolored. So, you know, technically, Mike can do what he wants to do through through the icon through that field, absolutely. So Which there is why be... it's a bit strange that that's not there, but be that as it may. So, is there something to use to convert an image to a JavaScript icon. Um, like a... Where it says JavaScript icon, it actually means um, this. So maybe that term, then maybe that yeah, it says JavaScript icon. It should probably say jQuery icon. That actually is probably the bug that's confusing you because you're right. It just said JavaScript icon, and it should say that. It should say jQuery icon. But even that's a bit of a misnomer. What it really should say is icon. Okay. Um, and icons are just a little bit different to kind of a raw image. Although you can actually make an icon out of a raw image with no effort at all. So there's, there's an element of redundancy going on there, isn't there? Uh, that's 188, I want 88. Uh, let's go to you see you see these little images here they yes. they're jquery icons and they're created using css with an image file um now in this particular case it's it's using a background image this this image here and then it's using a little bit of javascript to to pull out the width and the height and the background position of, of the plus um and that's what I, when I talk about, um, they're, they're like sprites. In the old days, we would have called them sprites. What we're actually seeing with the plus is one tiny little piece of that UI icons file. But, okay. but yeah. you can have any icons file you like. Um, and so, where did I? Talk about this. Oh, I talked about uh, yeah. I talked about it recently when I was doing Sequence Seven. I made it. Sequence Seven's got its own set of icons, um, but they're all cunningly named <laughs> using the this, this, this same kind of idea. So let me bring that up and I'll show you what I mean. Um, yeah, I caught. I saw that a couple of weeks ago when you talked about those. Now I can. This helps put it all together now. Yes. Now. Um, da, 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 da. Could be this one. I'm never sure which is the most recent one when I'm diving in. I have to go look. Um, so what's interesting about these icons is that, come on, come on, come on. I've got a second. Is it still here? No, it's not still here. All right. Oops, wrong screen. Do come back.
Yeah, I don't know how people work with only two monitors. Everything's so cramped. So web images, uh, styles, images. And there. Oh, that's it, styles, all right. So in, in Sequin, right, there's a CSS file, obviously. And what it's got is it's got a bunch of these, um, it's exact same structure, right? So I've got a CSS called uh, SW for Sequin, Sequin icon 16. These are actually 16 pixels high and wide, these ones. And they're in images, Sequin icon 16.png. So if we go there, if we go to images, and we look at this guy. There they all are, right? 16 by 16. This is one image, right? Um, and it's one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four icons. And I pick up that one image, and then in the CSS, I say, okay, well, the access icon is at zero, zero. So that's this tick mark here. And the no axis one is at zero minus 16, which is this one here. And what that means is that it actually starts at zero X and it scoots everything up by 16, hence the minus, okay? And then the width and the height are 16. So it kind of goes across 16, down 16. And that's, you get that sprite there. So these things can be any size, any color, any, anything, right? Um, it's all dictated by, that URL there, the width and height, and then the background position. And then dum 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 dum. Now, anywhere you see jQuery icon, or in the case we saw now JavaScript icon, which is wrong. Um, if it's named, if it had the name dot UI icon dash whatever, you literally can put that into that entry field and it will it will resolve, it will find it and put the thing in there. Now with Sequin, I, did, I chose not to do that. Sequin, it's got its own icon names, but that's not a problem either because there's CSS places I can go add the classes to the button. Um, so when I say you can make your own icons, you really can. Um, and we could have used any, I mean, there doesn't have to be multiple images in the file. That could be a single file, right? I mean, the fact there's multiple images in there just means I have to set this. But if it was a single file, it would just be a single file. Set the background URL, width and height. Off you go. Are you with me? I mean, am I making any sense at all? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks. That is the same question I had uh, the other week, and I just ignored the question and then kept going. But yeah, now I can go back and put in my download icon. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And and once you've done one or two, you go, actually, it's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Um, and then everything's an icon. I mean, the, the phrase icon doesn't mean anything, right? On the web. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe this is something that could be tidied up, maybe even with Netflix 12. I, sometimes I do that, I change the terminology, just to tidy it up to make it mean what it actually is so like the concept of saying jquery icon is the most correct at the moment because we're using mostly icons from the jquery file but there's nothing that makes us do that um putting it a javascript icon is just wrong it's not it's got nothing to do with javascript right um that's just a that's a slip of the, the keyboard calling it an icon it would be even more accurate because it's just an icon. But an icon makes people think of a .ico file. And in one of life's little ironies, the one thing you can't use here is a .ico file. You're best off using a PNG. Um, so maybe that should just be image. I don't know. Maybe sprite that image? Be well, except it doesn't have to be a sprite, you see. It's a CSS image is actually what it is. If we want to be, if we want to be completely accurate, it's an, it's an image done via CSS. So maybe it should change to that. Uh, maybe that's a good idea. And if anyone complains, I'll tell them you made me do it. 
Okay. <laughs> Pleasure, Rich. Hopefully thank that's you. helpful. Give it a go. Yes. Try it out. See if it works or not. All um, right. Thank you. Yeah. Now, why is it saying? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to save this. Uh, close this one. Don't save it. I have to be careful. I don't save real stuff during these webinars. Um. Uh, let's bring Danielle back. Uh, Danielle is self-muted. Bring yourself back there, Danielle. Hi, Bruce. Yes. Um, when I'm returning the self.list page, I want to know how I can see the contents of that because I'm not having any luck getting the net show receive to actually re show me what it's receiving back. Yeah, no. Um, so now you've got to be a little bit careful when you see net show receive. Net show receive will show you, and I should have mentioned this, it shows you everything twice because there's two things you're interested in. The one thing is what's coming back from the server. But it, yeah. in many cases, and that's done under the hood, that's done in the process method. Um, but in many cases, when you're talking to a web server, what's coming back is compressed. So you can't read it, it's it's gibberish. It's, it's just random binary stuff on the screen. Yeah. That's in the process method. So what you'll see in nature in, in your debug view, um, you'll see the compressed stuff, which is useful because the vast majority of classes don't get back compressed stuff, right? Mail and FTP and all those kind of things. So the, the, the setting is done at a very low level uh, in the process. So you're going to see the compressed stuff. But the good news is that you in page received, it will send it to debug view again. So what you get to see you get to see it come in twice, once as compressed and once as uncompressed. So you just scroll down past the compressed stuff, you'll find the uncompressed one a little bit lower down. I'm not and if you want, it. if you want to see what's in this page, it's just self dot this page dot trace, because this page is a string theory object, and if you do a trace method on that, you will get okay. the content of it. But I think you'll find then you have it four times, or three times. <laughs> Right, so, so yeah, I'm not actually getting anything useful at this stage that shows me what I'm getting back. You know? Yeah. I'm just seeing that I'm seeing the call just, successful. I'm seeing that it's passing the JSON successfully. It tells me it's then going to page received, but then I'm not seeing anything useful. Okay. Well then have a look at what's in, in this page and see what, what's there. Okay, so I'm gonna try using this page dot trace. No, yeah, yes, so it's self, right. self dot this page dot trace. Eh? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Well, that is all the questions. So, John, what's Quiet. happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, Mr. Hansen is with us once again with part three of his 4,000 part series on classes and templates and lists and queues. <laughs> yes. Well, he's doing, he's doing his part three of how to write a lot of code so you never write code. Right. And, and I applaud it. that because that's essentially my entire career, if you, if you want to sum it all up. And working really hard so that you don't have to. And then thinking of new things to work really hard at so that you don't have to. It seems there to be go. my yeah. You you work hard so we don't have to work so hard. <laughs> well, no, I worked hard so I wouldn't have to work hard. That's I always uh, wrote the stuff for myself first, but it turns out that then there's more stuff to write. So, uh, yeah. you know, you can you can eat the elephant, but it's still a big elephant to start with. So, one makes progress. That's that's all we can do, one step at a time. And then things change, and then standards yep. change, and then things that <laughs> no, people want change. Not, that's not even the real problem. No. The real problem is people dream up new things. They sit there and say, ah, oh, now what I really want to do is interact yeah. with Office. No, one, let me, no, 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 I want to export this to PDF. Um, you know, and, and so the, 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 the scope of things we can do keeps moving. The scope of things we want to do keeps moving. Yep. So, but I'm a firm believer in write it once, use it many, 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 many times. So that's that's why why these things exist. All right. Yeah.
cool. Um, right, that's uh, Mike's tomorrow. Don't forget the open U open Clarion also. webinar. Webinar. Well, also, what also? Also, also, I was going to say tomorrow we're going to talk more about the CIDC 2020 presentations because we, we need a name. We need a name. Have for them. a plan. Yeah, we have we a plan. We need to give it a, a name, like CIDC 2020 lockdown or something like that. You know, okay. Just yeah. just so that it's got a name. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, sure. If you registered for CIDC, then uh, either pitch up for that or watch the the, the um, YouTube recording of that tomorrow. Um, I will send out a mail once we know we got some. We got a big meeting on Saturday, and then after that, I'll send out a mail to all the registered users and maybe some not registered users if you are very nice. Um, but yes, we're going to be doing some online sessions for CIDC 2020 lockdown. Um, tune in tomorrow for more, for more information on that. That's yes. the uh, Clarion Live webinar, weekly webinar every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Correct. 4 p.m. UTC at the moment. At the moment, because Pacific time is 4 p.m. UTC. Right. Um, yeah, next Wednesday, next Thursday. Thanks for the questions, everyone. And see you all same time, same place next week. Hopefully with some more questions. And hopefully we may even see a Network 12 build. Who knows? Keep our thumbs crossed. Um, uh, I'm 50-50. <laughs> Optimistic, but not confident. Yeah, is, is, is where I would put myself. Um, right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thanks for the questions. Thanks to Ted for taking notes, John for doing the productions, and we'll see you all again, same time, same place next week. On that note, it's bye from me. Bye from me. And, and bye from Ted. He's got a really bad internet. So I'll say <laughs> bye from Ted. I'll say bye, bye from Ted. And bye from Ted. Bye from Daniel. <laughs> bye, Ted.